Every movie Wes does, he, he takes it up a notch in a way. And, and I think when he works on the animated movies, it really uh, has affected how he approaches regular movies. He makes an animatic, which is like a little cartoon of the entire film. And then we go to the actual location and we look at the animatic and sometimes we'll have to change the animatic a little bit because of the location or we change the location to fit the animatic. <laughs> He has a little library of DVDs of films that he thinks might influence us. Most of them were French New Wave films. I remember uh, Viva Sa Vie, the Godard film, The Fire Within, which was Louis Malle. The time period of our film is, uh, there's always a little bit, you're not quite sure when it is, but you know, it's 60s, kind of. Kind of reflective of that period, I think. We do a lot of testing, and uh, we were testing things in both black and white and color, and both Wes and I and a lot of people kind of were reacting to the black and white film and just how it transported you to a whole different dimension, really, you know, and, and we responded very positively to it, so we ended up shooting a lot more of the, f the entire film in black and white that was originally intended. I think that Wes used color to emphasize or to dramatize certain things, like in the story with Benicio and, and uh, Leah, where he's the painter, it's all in black and white. And then when we first see his paintings all on the, the wall there, we went, not only did we shoot color, but we shot anamorphic. And I think part of it was just to get all those paintings in the shot, but also I think it was a really dramatic moment. Thinking about when Saoirse Ronan in the, the later story, and the little boy is being tied up in GG, and he says, I bet you have blue eyes, and all of a sudden she leans into the shot and you got blue eyes. It, I think it gave it a real punctuation there. So we use color a little more sparingly and, and to punctuate certain things. The rest of the movie was pretty much black and white. We don't use camera cars, we don't use techno cranes, we don't use a lot of the tools that I might use on other commercials or feature films, but it's all kind of old school dollies. We use dolly track just so that when you make a move, it's always going to end up in the same place. Typically I use a, a gearhead, but for those shots where I have to do 180 degrees or whatever, you know, it's difficult for me to do it on the gearhead, so I, I use a fluid head. And the trick, as I've told people, is you put your feet and your body in a really comfortable position where you end, and then at the beginning, you, you might be twisted in a really awkward position, but then as you kind of come back and you find your, where it feels natural, that's kind of how I do it, and it works most of the time. Some of the shots get kind of tricky, and particularly when I, we do 360s even sometimes, and you know, I have to walk around the dolly and find, you know, I have to work it out in my head when I'm gonna be making those moves. So fashionable today, everyone likes to shoot everything wide open at, you know, T2. We're just the opposite. We, we, like on day exteriors, we'll shoot 11. Interiors, I try to usually bring them up, you know, we try to get a four or five, six, and even higher. Sometimes I have do interiors at 11 if, you know, I mean, I have to, if, like Wes will tell me, you know, someone's very close to camera and someone's very far away, and we want to hold them both in focus, and we know we need a big stop to do that, so we bring in the big guns. He prefers having much more depth of field than most directors I work with. The lens choices, for instance, are not made by the animatic. That's something that's done on the set. And, you know, Wes will look at something and then we'll say, well, let's look at this other lens. And then we'll, we'll say, you know, I like that much better. Sometimes we'll move the track and we'll go back a little bit on a longer lens, uh, like a 25, or sometimes we won't. The set is fixed, it's built, and it's usually built to the specification of a particular lens. Before we even build the set, we go with a finder and we, we put tape marks down. These are where the walls are going to be, this is where this is going to be. It's very carefully constructed. Sometimes once it's built, the feeling of it is better with a different lens. Sometimes we'll make those types of decisions on the day. We use the Aericam ST and the LT. And for all the spherical, the 137 shots, we use the Cook S4s. We started using those on Grand Budapest Hotel, and both Wes and I love them. And we decided to go with the same lenses. And then uh, some Cooks and some of the Airy Master Anamorphics for the anamorphic shots. 
Wes is not one who likes to do a lot of lighting. So we try to keep it outside the set as much as possible. And, and in the Benicio story, if you remember, the, the big room that he's painting in, there were these three giant skylights in that building. Was, the ceiling was quite high. And our original plan was to hang lights up there, but the ceiling was old and it couldn't hold the weight of the lights. So we ended up having to bring the soft sun in from uh, England, actually, I think it came from. And actually we had three of them, one through each skylight. And these are big, expensive lights. And, and it was in France in the winter, so it was, you know, it gets dark early and it, there isn't a lot of light there and, and it's often overcast. We could shoot the same thing at noon or at midnight. It didn't pa matter because we had these giant lights coming through the sky skylight, so. But generally we try to use go with as little light as we can get away with. And day exteriors, we rarely use, almost never use lights. When the actors arrive, he spends a lot of time with each actor. They go over their scenes together, talk about things. Their wardrobe is very carefully selected, obviously, and makeup and, you know, and they've all seen the animatic, so they kind of know what it's, the deal is. And it's funny, because a lot of times the actors will say, well, on the animatic, I come over here at this time, you know what I mean? So a lot of these things are worked out beforehand, but then on the set with the actors, Wes tends to shoot a fair amount, and they go through the scene and discover things together, and, and oh, I really like that, and you know, so there's a lot of time that he likes to have with the actors. Wes has a very specific thing that he's looking for in a shot, and so they learn to hit their marks very carefully. <laughs> and often we have a lot of actors in a shot, and he likes to do things without a lot of coverage. So if you're getting blocked or it's a little awkward, you know, we'll do it again. He's very specific about where people should be. Sometimes we start shooting before it's really quite ready, which always kind of freaks me out. But I've come to learn that he's not going to use those early takes. But you know, he sometimes finds that people concentrate more. They know that there's film running through a camera. And so oftentimes the earlier takes are a warm up, so to speak. <laughs> and maybe something good will come out. Maybe they'll all work out perfectly, you know. But usually it takes a while for everything to kind of fall into place because there's so many elements. You know, oftentimes the moves are very complex for us and the actors have to be in certain places and, and it takes a little while to get that right. The French Dispatch is kind of Wes's homage to uh, writers, particularly writers of the New Yorker magazine and what they go through in order to get their stories and then you know have they, having to deal with the editor at the end. And I think with Wes's films in general, and particularly The French Dispatch, because I've seen it probably seven or eight times now, and, and I, I learned something every time, and I worked on the movie. You know, there's little things that I never made the connections before. So the first time for me is always a little bit of a just overwhelmed, like uh, as a viewer watching the film, I think. And there's so much information, so much going on. I always have to read the script several times and watch the animatic several times. Just try to let it absorb into my consciousness so I can kind of get more and more information. You discover things as you go along. And, and even during the making of it, when the actors are there, you know, and all of a sudden you see the subtleties of performance that they bring to it. And then you're discovering a whole other wrinkle to the story that maybe I hadn't seen before. I work closely with my camera crew and the grip crew. There's many different ways to pull a shot off and we have to kind of come up with our idea of the best way of doing it. For me, it's always, when there's a really difficult shot, it's a challenge. I get a great deal of satisfaction, you know, if we're doing a very difficult camera move with a lot of lighting changes that go on within the shot. When we pull it off, we leave the set feeling really great about it. 